Hi, I'm Deb Ali. I'm an artist and assistant professor at University of Texas in Austin. Hi, I'm White Feather. I'm an artist and scholar working creatively in bioengineering. This collaborative project we present, Synthetic Sentence, The Pussification of Biotech, is an exploration of how technology could be used to facilitate sexual autonomy and uh, pleasure through 3D bioprinting clitoris. And these synthetic organs are cultured in vitro, embedded with neural and herd muscle cells, differentiated from our own menstrual stem cells. We create these clitorises using our own menstrual fluid as a resource <clears throat> to engage with technological tools on our own terms and with our own biomaterials. And through this, we address biocapitalism and control of narratives around sex and pleasure questioning the normative uses of technology in spaces that objectify bodies. Only as recently as 2022, women scientists discovered that female snakes not only have a clitoris, but they have two, it's called hemiclitoris. And these organs replete with nerves and erectile tissue are indicative of a function that extends beyond mere reproduction, suggesting that mating acts of snake could be as much about seduction, mutual pleasure, and choice, and as is much about procreation. And in this case, usual evolutionary biology narratives about animal sexual coercion and subjugation of females may be false. And the hemiclitoris in snake was previously mistaken as scent glands. And this mischaracterization is a reflective of a historical trend in science, where male-dominated perspectives have overlooked or misinterpreted female anatomy. And the human clitoris, a critical organ for sexual pleasure, has also been subject to such neglect. We mapped the first anatomy of correct clitoris after we map out the whole human genome. Witch hunting guides from the Middle Ages referred to clitoris as the devil's teat and claimed only witch had one. Up until the latter half of the 20th century, it was deemed socially unacceptable uh, to discuss the clitoris openly. So we decided to grow a living clitoris in a dish. And here is some background on um, menstruation blood. There are stem cells and they are pluripotent. It means that if they can differentiate into uh, specialized cells to grow into new organs. So we developed a successful protocol <clears throat> for explanting endometrial cells from menstrual fluid and culture them or grow them in vitro. And for this protocol, we collect menstrual fluid in a silicone menstrual cup for the first two or three days when the most tissue is released from the endometrium. And the collected samples are put into tubes, they're centrifuged, and the result is the separation of the fluid into three components, serum, tissue, and red blood cells. The middle layer uh, that you can see is the tissue, tissue layer where the stem cells can be extracted from. And this sample is then cultured in nutrient fluid in a flask with the nutrient fluid replaced after 24 hours to flush out any remaining red blood cells. <clears throat> what is then left are the endometrial stem cells, which you can see on the right, which have adhered to the dish. And these stem cells are cultured in a nutrient media that contains antibiotics. And once they've proliferated enough, they are then cryopreserved for future use. So we revive these cells for our differentiation protocols and then later bioprinting. So these are some neuronal cell types that I differentiated from my menstrual stem cells for our project. And the structure with the branching protrusions are the neuronal precursors. Menstrual stem cells can be differentiated into many cell types, including the neuronal cells uh, and cardiomyocytes or heart muscle cells, and then grown in 3D bioprinted uh, clitoris structures. Our 3D bioprinted clitorises in their final iteration will be a co-culture of both neuronal cell types and cardiomyocytes that have been differentiated from our menstrual stem cells. Cardiac cells have a unique feature. They're able to contract without input from the nervous system. So since each individual in vitro heart cell will contract with a heartbeat, our clitorises will not only potentially rhythmically pulse, 
but also conceivably respond to the pulsing with electrochemical signaling by the neurons. So is this a form of synthetic pleasure for the externalized self? And when working with materials such as cells that have been differentiated along the neuronal pathway and which have the potential for synthetic sentience, the concepts of laboratory containment and control are complexified. What if a neuron in a Petri dish exhibits some kind of neuroanatomy in response to its conditions? Can a 3D bioprinted clitoris seeded with neuronal uh, precursor cells possibly dream? In its wet environment, is it wet dreaming? In our project, we imagine the capacity of our differentiated menstrual stem cells for sensory perception that's linked to pleasure. Scientists have proved human brain cells in a dish can play the game Pong. What can a clitoris in a dish do? Maybe the clitoris can swipe Tinder and literally think with their clitoris. Scientists have defined cellular synthetic sentience as being able to perceive and respond dramatically to sensory information. And cellular sentience could be like a state of unconsciousness or dreaming uh, where there's perception and response to stimuli without full conscious awareness. <clears throat> so by conceptualizing cellular sentience as a form of unconscious perception, we can explore how cells while not conscious, might still experience a form of dreaming. And this perspective allows for some really intriguing debates around the boundaries of sentience and how we interpret and understand the experiences of cellular life. As we delve into the capabilities of lab-grown clitoris, we must question whether it too can sense arousal and derive pleasure. If pleasure is the product of neural responses to smith stimuli, and if a co-culture of neurons and cardiomyocytes can mimic some of the bioelectrical and biochemical events that occur during sexual smith stimulation, can we engineer a synthetic organ capable of producing a similar occurrence of arousal and climax? And by using our own cells to grow such an organ, we blur the lines between the self and the other, raising the possibility of experiencing pleasure from an external source that is nonetheless intimately connected to us. And this brings us to the concept of the externalized self. Is an organ grown from an all one's own cell an extension of oneself? And if so, could engaging with this externalized tissue for sexual grati grati gratification be equated to a form of masturbation? The outside of body orgasm orchestra not only challenges the normative one body, one orgasm paradigm, but also invites us to consider the multiplicity of pleasure and the different ways it can manifest. Ownership of this bioengineered organ becomes an intriguing philosophical question. If one derives pleasure from a clitoris grown from their own cells, the experience could be viewed as a personal and self-contained act. However, if the tissue is grown from another cell, such as a friend's menstrual stem cell, the dynamic shifts. The act may not constitute infidelity in traditional sense, yet it introduced a new dimension to the discourse of sexual ethics and fidelity. It raises question about the nature of sexual interaction and where the lines are drawn between self-pleasure, sexual activity with another person, and the use of bioengineered tissues for erotic grat gratification. Some adult film actors sell fleshlights, <clears throat> a kind of a sex toy shown here, that are molded from their vaginas to give their fans a more personalized experience. Now with a lab grown clitoris, uh, sex workers could potentially grow multiple clitorises from their menstrual stem cells and commoditize them. What would we be selling if we consider them living beings with <clears throat> limited autonomy? <laughs> Who has the right to capitalize on them uh, as a surrogate orgasm product? Although our protocol presumes some technical experience with basic cell culture, we offer it as a recipe for your techno-feminist cookbook. And part of our working ethos is the democratization of biotechnological tools, including information about what we have found success with. So for us, this raises questions about access and the potential for misuse. What ethical frameworks must be established to ensure responsible use? And how do we secure equitable access to these technologies? Is it the same as lab-grown meat? 
both a lab-grown piece of meat and a lab-grown clitoris could be eaten uh, in a certain way. So what's the difference? Lab-grown meat or so-called clean meat is a techno-scientific industrial product of cellular agriculture where animal cells are grown in vitro uh, into an edible form for human consumption. Marketed as ethical, uh, the concept of lab-grown meat is entrenched in moral purity. Patriarchal attitudes about women's sexuality often associate pleasure with immoral behavior. And as Jaobo mentioned, since the time of the European witch hunts, the clitoris has been perceived as an embodiment of evil. While our laboratory protocol for culturing 3D bioprinted clitorises is similar to some of the tissue engineering methods that are used to cultivate lab-grown meat, it has not been industrially scaled for mass consumption, but rather maintained as a small, personalized, synthetic hybrid tissue form that's designed to investigate cultural notions of female erotic pleasure. So what if everyone had access to the experience of a clitoral orgasm? <clears throat> Alternatively, could the clitoris itself experience orgasm within the fluid environment of its Petri dish? What might an in vitro orgasm look like? To know more about that, follow us on OnlyFans. Uh, and moving forward, uh, OnlyFans will serve as a digital stage where we uh, chronically uh, push the development of this journey about this lab ground clitoris. And in this digital space, uh, especially on the platform like OnlyFans, Pornhub, content is consumed rapidly and often uncritically. However, our intention is to interrupt the passive conception of erotic imagery by bringing about technologically crafted clitoris into the arena of OnlyFans, we provide content that is not only sensual, but deeply enmeshed with layers of scientific and feminist discourse. We compile the audience to engage with the material, not only on a visual or erotic level, but also intellectually and ethically. And here's the video. Hello everyone, we are here to talk about clitoris. When's the last time you touched your clitoris? How did you feel? Did you shiver? Did you orgasm? Was it transcendental? I recently read that scientists found snake has two clitoris. I wish I had that. And they contain nerves and erectile tissue. And now they think mating in snake is not about coercion or violence, but instead about stimulation and seduction. That really doesn't surprise me. Most tech spaces are overwhelmingly romantic. The penis is much more well studied than the clitoris. We need the pussification of biotech. We need a new mode of technophilia. Right, so how about we grow a clitoris from the stem cell out of our own menstruation gland? Well, here we are. This is our lab-grown clitoris from our menstruation blood. Question time. First question, is it a sentient being? Wow, what is a sentient being? Um, 
It's the ability to feel things. Can you feel? If I touch you, can you feel anything? Can you feel if you are just a bunch of cells made of neurons and erectile cells? Hmm. What do you think, Clito? <laughs> Well, the creation process is essentially the same and ideally you want to put both in your mouth. So I guess you could say that. Next question is, can it give consent? Well, consent usually implies willingness, but how can we know if it can't even speak? And how do we know if it's completely under my control? Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. For premium members, we provide a special service. We can share the recipe with you so you can grow your extra clitoris from your own menstruation blood. And what do you want us to do with this living clitoris? Write it down in the comment section and we'll make your wish come true.